so good good day um uh sorry let me just get set up um good day uh welcome to the international association for the study of the commons or iasc's fourth annual world commons week event and thank you for attending my name is charlie schweik i'm a professor at the university of massachusetts amherst i'm the president-elect of iasc and i'm the co-organizer of the world commons week 22 uh, 2022 event um ISC World Commons Week is a global annual event celebrating and promoting commons research and practice. And this is the keynote webinar for the IASC European region. I'd like to thank my colleagues, Tobias and Ilkom, who together work to coordinate, together work to coordinate ISC Europe and who together organize this webinar. So let me explain how this webinar will work. This is a uh, this is a Zoom webinar. We're all experts in Zoom, I think, but this is a Zoom webinar, not a meeting. Um, we, we've asked our invited keynote speaker to speak about uh, 35 to 40 minutes. Um, I'll act as a timer and I'll probably using audio signal when there's five minutes left. Uh, the last 15 minutes or so will be left for questions and answers. And uh, Ilkom and Tobias will moderate. At the end of the, um, we'll end at the top of the hour unless it feels like we want to have more conversation. We can be a little flexible depending on what the audience wants to do. Um, to uh, what what uh, the audience members, because it's a webinar, your attendees, um, we've got video off. Um, the the best way to ask questions, and you can do this anytime through the talk, is through the Q and A function at the bottom of your Zoom screen, I believe. So look for the Q and A function. And you can put questions in as the talk goes on, um, but we'll we'll address those after the talk's um, completed, unless it seems like it's a question of clarification. At any time, I can open up the mute um, so you can ask your question as well. Uh, so with that, I don't see anybody that looks like they're on the phone, so I'm not going to go through those instructions. But let me now turn it over to Ilkom to introduce our speaker. Thank you very much. Charlie, um, happy World Commons Week, everyone. Uh, it's great to be here. And my name is Ilham Salif. I am senior researcher at the University of uh, Halle in Germany. Uh, together with uh, Tobias Halle, who is here, we are a coordinating team of the ISC Europe and CIS chapter. And it is my pleasure today to introduce uh, Giuseppe Michiarelli. Um, who will uh, give the talk uh, for the regional chapter uh, in Europe and CIS. Um, I had the pleasure of uh, meeting uh, Giuseppe uh, back in 2000 and 2019 in Lima. And, and I will tell you uh, how exactly by the end of this uh, introduction, but Giuseppe Michiarelli is a political philosopher and legal sociologist. Um, he works at the University of Salerno and collaborates with, uh, in, with other universities such as Universitas uh, Mercatorum and University of Venice. Um, his research focuses on the commons, participatory democracy, and transformation of public and private institutions. His research so far has covered, uh, I think, dual strands of transformations of contemporary democracy and the creation of new institutions, both of which arise from the neoliberal revolution, in addition to those that may yet come from the multiple innovations of social movements and civil society. He also consults for several local administrations and supports different grassroots experiences around the world with a political legal hacking methodology um, adapted to enable their action with different innovative tools. Um, so he dedicates a lot of time to the creative use of law and the legal hacking methodology uh, that he's been developing uh, for the uses of different processes, developing normative co-production uh, approaches to open up uh, kind of new approaches uh, of global law to search for new and unimagined spaces of democratization. Um, some examples that come across in his work 
and the, the keywords are urban and collective civic use of emerging commons, um, new legal institutions developed with other activists and colleagues, uh, particularly in his hometown in Naples. Uh, and also uh, we had the chance of having him at the European Colloquium series where he demonstrated multiple municipalities across the country in Italy, but also across Europe. Uh, that uh, he has been consulting on the urban commons. Um, he has co-authored multiple uh, articles and book chapters uh, on urban commons, urban commoning, on hacking the legal uh, or legal hacking, um, as well as different new approaches and new institutions for urban commons. In, rec in recognition for his studies, and this is how I came to know for the first time uh, Giuseppe, he received also the Young Scholar uh, Eleanor Ostrom Award in 2019 in Lima. Um, I think this is probably enough. Today's uh, the title of his talk is Emerging and Necessary Commons, Governance Issues in the Interaction with the State and the Market. And without further ado, I will hand it over to Giuseppe. Thank you very much to Charlie and obviously to you, Ilkom and Tobias, that uh, are the amazing coordinator uh, of, uh, of the European part of the organization and of um, colloquium series that we have and that will be held. So stay in touch also with the European website because they have uh, organized and coordinated something that is very interesting. <laughs> so let's start. <clears throat> saying that when we speak about governance issues, obviously we perfectly know among our different uh, studies and research, both as uh, scholars and practitioners, that we are speaking about many different goods. So we can say that we have a pioneering age of the commons when we speak about pasture, water reservoirs, and we are now facing another stage of this study, when there is a such kind of explosion of the commons. All this picture can be addressed as commons, and even these other pictures that are ex that are regarding uh, another typology of commons that is quite new, that are the urban commons. So. The first point is that are we discovering commons or we are discovering a new way to create them and what does it mean? So I think that if we are asking to ourselves if there is a common explosion, we should stop a moment because maybe we not agree on this topic because obviously the commons category and the common pool resource category, maybe they are not the same uh, or yes, this is another open field of discussion, means that we are speaking about goods that are very different from each others in terms that are crucial for the category. For example, in the extent of rivalry and non-excludability, on the degree of homogeneity or heterogeneity of the communities of reference and their proprietors, even in their numbers, or differences about the benefits that sometimes are for the members and sometimes are not only for the members, the proprietors. And moreover, we can uh, um, are not we can not agree on if this explosion is useful and fruitful for the theory, or on the contrary, it helps to create a mess even between scholars. So. In order to answer to this, I think that we should answer before on why there is this kind of common explosion. And I think that the key is on interdependence in collective action. And if we start from this point, I think that we can um, have elements that can help us to understand why there is this explosion. Starting from Eleanor Rostrom, we perfectly know that collective action problems occur when individuals choose actions 
in an interdependent situation. The point is that today, a wider idea of interdependence is spreading in different settings, in different groups, among the different areas. And today we can say, I think, that interdependence is an essential condition of the living and the dilemma of politics in general. So we perfectly understand this if we just think to the syndemic crisis and to COVID-19. So this new level of awareness that we have today is spread among many different collective action activities. And starting from this, we can say that commons look like electric fuses. When a commons go into crisis, it is a wake up call that something go wrong in the ecosystem of reference. And another element that is crucial that when we speak about commons, we always speak about a sort of kind of ecological relation. That is an ecological in the traditional sense, thus said between environment and all the creators, but is also an, eco an ecology of relations between humans that have the unique responsibility to the environment, because we are at the moment the only race we can't we can consciously destroy it entirely it. So one point is that when we speak about this complex situation and the dilemmas of interdependence, we speak also about the environment where these commons are. And the environment is obviously the ecological one, but is also the political legal environment, the social environment. And here comes the state and the market. We obviously know that commons are beyond the state and the market, but this does mean that they are impermeable to them. And if we say this, we should also go to a step forward, that when we speak about state and the market in a traditional approach, we think to two separated entities. But after what we can call with Michel Foucault and many scholars that uh, work on what is called governmentality studies, using this category of governmentality taught by Foucault, with the neoliberalization of the state and the global economy, state and the market are all very less divided because there are transformation that come from the market that are today totally inserted in the institution. So we're speaking about principles, about rules, about new institution and, about, and check and balances between the institution. So if we say this, another element that can help us is that when we speak about the legal framework that, and we will see, is connected to the governance of the commons, we speak about something that is performative. The legal framework is not only enable or forbidding some governance structure, it deeply conditions them through the entire regulatory system. So, when we speak about regulatory system, you should imagine also ecosystem, also to accounting, taxation, the rules on the debt, on urban planning, free trade, uh, um, rules and environmental legislation. All these ecosystem that come in a neoliberalization age from the state and the market, both from them, um, are what I call the legal framework. So are not the only the legal rules that allow or forbid the structure, the singular structure of the governance of the commons. So who decide, what are the rules, but even the, the, the wider environment of that common. So if we come back to the picture that I show you before, for example, of these different commons, obviously we as scholars can see uh, all the dilemmas of cooperation, of the dilemmas of um, organize that come from, for example, uh, trouble that with the design principle we can challenge. 
but we can see behind that picture even other um, other key problems that are all legal problems and and so for example legal issues not say problems legal issues so we had an uh, amazing webinar uh, uh, some days ago from New Zealand and just look at it at our uh, website and there you can see how there was this innovation in New Zealand on the legal recognition as a legal person of uh, Te Ruria. Uh, and, and this is very important. But you can have also other, uh, many other examples, like urban gardens, and this is a quote from a proposal of Italian law, but you have different one in your countries. For example, regulation in that case, misuse the size, the typology, forbid and allow the different uses, purposes, and so on. And when we speak about legal framework, we speak also on the fact that it's not only a matter of law, but this means a different level of legislation, their effectiveness. So this means the control of different public authorities. And let's say also the political approach to different laws. And here you can have the quote from Clarissa Gandur regarding the uh, policies of Bolsonaro government regarding the Amazonian forest. Another potential commons. Moreover, for example, when we speak about the legal, we don't speak only about a law that is, uh, uh, let's say, uh, for is immobile, right? Law lives in their interpretation. And so political position and the magnetic approach are crucial also to make a legal act effective. And this is, for example, in the Italian referendum. We had this referendum with these results that were very clear, as you can see. But from 2011 to today, really a few cities uh, go in the line of the, this kind of results. Because obviously you speak about other laws and other interpretation that should arrive in order to make a single norm effective. And we have after another big issue, that is when uh, there is a conflict on the interpretation of rules and laws. And so, for example, you have another quote from uh, this, the joint section of the Court of Cassation of Italy. And here, uh, the issue was regarding the fishing valleys in the Venice Lagoon. And what is interesting here is that if you read a part of that sentence, you can have some kind of connection, even with the, the first example that I show you that was about uh, uh, New Zealand. But when we speak about law uh, and this kind of leading law approach, there is another level that we should never forget, even in our discussion. That is how laws can destroy not only the environment, if there are bad laws, but even the lives of the people and of the commoners. So for example, this is a, a, the picture of uh, an, what we will speak about, that urban commons and emerging commons in the city of Naples, where we created a new legal tool among the um, work of many activists and many researchers, it's not my work, let's be clear about that. But uh, in that case, I was part of this uh, movement. Uh, and in the beginning, this real estate, we are speaking about 50,000 square meters only in the city of Naples, were squatted by social movement and activists. And so they started commoning activities illegally. The legal recognition that we uh, conquire with a new governance tools also prevented the penal proceedings against hundreds of activists. And this is not the same in rural cities. This is a picture of another urban common 
that is 17 years ongoing activities in Rome, it's called the HESC. And here you have, but I can do many other example, um, a trial against these uh, commoners. Um, and uh, they asked for a fine of 2,050 uh, uh, euros. That is it's quite a lot for people that don't do activities, commercial activities, and don't provide work in these kind of activities. So the last picture that I showed you before, obviously here is about Creative Commons, is ruled. It was another interesting uh, and important legal innovation, but we can speak also here uh, about something that are not Creative Commons, for example, JSTOR. We, everyone we use it. Everyone here that is a scholar, sometimes in his life probably have used um, illegally some articles or paper, even from JSTOR. I have done that. And uh, um, you perfectly know the story of Aaron uh, Schwartz. And in this case, what does it mean? Uh, a struggle on the open source and the commoning activities. So just just to us to remember that when we see a picture of the commons, we can see multiple dilemmas. And I think that there are two unconnected level of governance dilemmas. The first level concerns the design principle of common structures and thus the dilemmas of cooperation and appropriation of an interdependent resource. And after we are a second level that concerns the interaction or the recognition, let's say, between the first level of the commons governance and the legal framework in which each commons exists and tries to survive. Because as I told before, when we speak about legal framework, we speak not only about the legal structure on how that common activities is translated, so with private, tools with public tools in a co translating it in this kind of governance structure in this kind of typology but even the more general legal frame so if any struggle around the commons is always a struggle around the legal framework of that commons i'm asking if any legal design principle on the legal framework of the commons exists. Because we obviously focused a lot on the dilemmas of, uh, of the rules inside the commons between the commoners and the co-appropriators, but we have also other dilemmas. So I have not an answer on that, obviously, but I have some result that I wonder to show to you. The first one, is that if collective governance is a, a key part of commons category, we need to translate in some way this even into the legal grammar. And to do that, uh, I would suggest to speak about necessary and emerging commons. I will show you first this three point and after we will speak about it. Second one is that making rules from grassroots is a difficult task because we perfectly know starting from design principle, the third one, how is important that uh, at least a part of the regulation is made by the same people and the same organization that will use that commons. But we need methods and strategy for a different legal obligation because it's not simple to, to write the rule and to respect the rules. And I call this the creative use of law. And for the last one is that we need new laws and new regulation for the commons and for their legal framework. But we have sometimes no time, as the ecological movement uh, a lot of time uh, say to us, and uh, even not enough power to imagine this kind of different regulations. So my proposal is, uh, for example, here to hack the existing legal framework in order to make for the commons more possible to be protected. So let's start from the first one. Let's say the 
element of necessary and emerging commons. And I start from this uh, quote of mentioned in Korea that focus very well how is important that there is a structure of governance that distributes rights between the commoners. But here we have a, a, a big part of a discussion, in particular in Italy, among uh, what kind of legal structure can translate a certain kind of commons. Just think about the water, just think about, uh, this is a plan, probably one of the best examples. There is, a, let's say, this discussion about public tools and private tools. Even if we use the bundle of rights theory, and so even if we go uh, far from a monolithic idea of the property, and we understand different kinds of rights among it, the problem is that the dichotomy of pri public and private goods is not sufficient. Um, I have no time to explain uh, all this point, but there are very, very many discussion and articles on that. Mm -hmm. I just say that when you speak about a certain kind of commons, Amazonia forest, for example, that I was putting before, we have a problem that a public institution, uh, that are national institutions, that are obviously linked to the sovereignty of a state, sometimes are not enough because that is not only a commons of Colombia, Brazil, and different countries. It's a, wider common for all the humanity and the interdependence there uh, is an independence of everyone so sometimes we don't have uh, the public structure because we don't have this kind of institution other times we perfectly know how the rules of the state even in the example that i made but here even the study or, that comes from uh, Elinor Rostom and many of us uh, can teach about that. Um, there are other kind of problems. Uh, and uh, there is the problem, let's say, in a word of the autonomy of the commoners that is not simply preserved with uh, public state governance. And after we are private goods, and here there are other kind of issues that regard another time the regulation that arise around the limits and the control of the exploitation of the commons in a private based uh, legal tools. So for this reason, I suggest first of all, in order to maintain a certain kind, a certain degree of limits of the category of the commons, and at the same time to preserve the expansive capacity of the commons, because we are facing these two elements. How is difficult to have a category that is not only a theoretical one, but even more difficult, a legal one, and how we can imagine a certain kind of flexible category, an open category that can allow different claim and different commons to be recognized as such if they respect some kind of elements. So the first necessary commons come from also the innovation that come from the Italian debate around the commons that link the use and the preservation of the commons to the fundamental rights. So obviously we are speaking about an innovation regard the, our traditional theory on the field. But this is very important because if we translate a certain kind of commons, such as goods that are functional to the exercise of fundamental rights, then we can imagine that both the private or the public ownership are affected by this element. And this means that if there, there is a public ownership, this should be preserved. And if there is a private ownership, this should respect the social function of that world. In both cases, 
they should be subject to determinate kinds of collective use to uh, assignment or else exception that should be made. And here we can have many different examples in our different legal uh, experiences. In order to guarantee and reinforce this dimension, what we should imagine is also to affect the governance, even when it's public, in a sort kind of collective action dimension. And here we can use uh, and we can innovate all the realm of the participatory tools that we have in participatory democracy. And this is another uh, issue that sometimes intersect our discussion. And I think that this is the place where we have to put this kind of uh, governance structure. Obviously, these participatory tools should be very, very different among the different typology of commons. So we can imagine uh, and work on different, uh, on different elements. And this, can, uh, this category can help also us uh, to include uh, in this kind of category, uh, not only commons that are today recognized as such, but maybe also other goods that we think that is important to recognize as commons. And for example, all the discussion that is around the vaccines that we started um, in a very, very widespread discussion among the world uh, in the COVID-19, but was a discussion that was, and also a legal struggle that was very important even before, for example, for uh, other life-saving drugs uh, like the one against uh, uh, AIDS in India uh, in particular. So here, this category can help us to also rethink the rules and regulation on the goods that we um, think that should be addressed as necessary comments. And after we are another Macro category of commons, where yes, they are functional another time to fundamental rights, but here we can imagine a wider interpretation of fundamental rights that should be very important to address, and even to a direct exercise of those. So, when we speak about this kind of emerging commons, and I started this uh, reflection starting from the urban commons, and we will speak soon about that, uh, you have to think about a good that is not itself so important, for example, like a water resource or like a vaccine. It can be a, an abandoned building, for example. And in that case, what makes the difference is the way of governance, exactly. And the way of governance means two things. The first one, is for what you use that good. And here arrived the importance to intersect uh, this discussion with fundamental rights. And secondly, with a sort kind of collective governance structure. And here I speak about open communities. And this is another trouble. I will arrive. Just point out that this element is for uh, uh, let's say, uh, first answer to the first issue. After we go to the second one, that's obviously linked, that is the creative use of law. And here we have troubles that daily we face also in our case-based research. So how we write the rules for the governance of the commons? How do we do that without an excessive formalism or without any? And how we are able to create a new institution, because this is not something simple. A lot of times we are not allowed to do that. So I think that what destroys communities a lot of time is exactly here. Because even commoners and even this rule making is so difficult because we have everyone poisons from the same evil that is in the society. So let's say a hierarchy, lack of trust, selfness, free riding, and the homo 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 homini lupus behavior, quoting Hobbes. And this is the hegemony behavior, both in the state and the market. That can be also in 
commons. So the element of writing rules in a different way is crucial exactly to answer to this problematic issue. So come back to the urban commons. And when we speak about urban commons, first of all, we have to think about the activities that are running here. Here you can have some example, but you perfectly know that there are many different examples of many different urban commons uh, where you do social activities, cultural activities, and so on. So here, uh, when we speak about the writing of rules, we have obviously some kind of uh, troubles. I go very quickly here because we know the circle of trust that this is so important is also uh, ambivalent. For example, for a political philosopher, when you speak about community, you speak also about the problem of the community. What does it mean that a community is open or is not open? And here comes the issue of heterogeneity. That quote is uh, the second one from Ostrom another time. You perfectly know how have heterogeneity in a, a group means also trouble. And indeed, uh, in a traditional approach, homogeneity is one of the element that is a key element of the category. But if you study urban commons, you don't see this. You see it quite the opposite. Uh, I, um, there are some scholars, but even in my experience, I can say that maybe all the case-based experience that I see is around 100 uh, case study experience. They try to be heterogeneous. The open door system is at the center of uh, this kind of experimentation. These don't make total heterogeneous that communities because even when we speak about heterogeneity, this is a big, big word. We have to understand what we are speaking about, but there is always this kind of challenge to be open. And I think that, that if we use uh, this element, even in a traditional uh, from Samuelson uh, differentiation of the goods, we can have a sort kind of innovation. Because obviously when we speak about a real estate, claim it as an urban commons, we speak about a good that is, is, is very simple to exclude the people. You just need a key to lock the door. But if we have learned that exclusion and inclusion can be also the outcome of different kind of barriers, such as norm, tradition, and so on, then also non-excludability can be the result of a political choice oriented in this case to move toward and solidar in solidarism. And in this case, what we uh, see, like urban commons that are probably uh, more in this traditional schema of toll goods, then if we apply that in the governance structure and in the governance rule, there is this challenge to the heterogeneity, this tension to the heterogeneity, so we can move, let's say, urban commons to common progressors. Because here, excludability and rivalry are the outcome of a different governance system. Just reminding, it's about five minutes left. Perfect. So here, the point is that when we speak about this, we probably imagine a sort of kind of changing mind around the, a traditional cooperative approach where mutualistic proposals are aiming providing goods and services and job opportunities maybe to the members of the organization and a common based approach where the community of reference that manage and take care of an emerging commons does not take exclusive benefit from it because while they take utilities, they implement the possibility of use for a wider community that includes newcomers and future generation. And here we can have also a different definition about urban commons, our mentioned commons located in next places where they are exactly uh, uh, run by this community-based organization in a non-excludability. But here is the output of a political choice. So the last point is, how we can do that. And here comes the methodology of legal architecture. So let's say two points, because we have a three 
one point and that two point two. The first one that we need legal tools that recognize both the collective management of the commons. And this should be addressed as, as a public communitarian entities and not traditional private ones. And the second one that we don't need the regulation of the commons, but different regulation of their wider environment. And this means even different economic principles as we said before. So I have not the time to speak about that. I just go here from some uh, place where you can find uh, reasoning about this and quoting uh, uh, here other uh, website and uh, toolkit when you can see. And even in the, our uh, <laughs> conference that we will be, which will be in Nairobi, uh, there are many panels that will uh, uh, challenge these uh, issues. And one of these uh, is uh, the one that with Margarita and Andrea I chair. So give it a look and maybe we can apply and we will, uh, I will be very happy <laughs> to see more uh, discussion about this topic. So I have not time to speak about how we can translate commons into derivative terms. Let's say that we have different legal troubles when we try to uh, translate them in some kind of traditional tools because another time law is performative. So when we speak about commons, I'm not thinking about this kind of community that are closed communities. Last point is why to act the legal, because when we try to make this kind of innovation, as I told before, a lot of time we are not able to create from nothing a new law and a new regulation. So what is crucial here is to imagine to use something that the legal system recognize and allow, and then make a sort kind of act, a change. That is a small change, but can open uh, in a totally different way that legal framework. And for example, this is what we made with the civic use in Italy. Civic use are an ancient tool in um, property land governance. Uh, we just try to use this kind of tools that is allowed, where the people are allowed, for example, to uh, use a pasture for their sheep, to take woods in a different way, changing this kind of elements into an element where you, you have the right to use, for example, a public building in order not to take the wood, but to do social activities, to use urban gardening, to, you, to, to have the opportunity to cultural exchange even with cinema and so on. So what I want to finish is that using the law for grams, grassroots is a strategy to escape what is a critic, uh, not only to urban commons, but let's say to all these kind of activities that are focused in small communities, in small experiment that uh, someone called the local trap. I think that claiming same rights using a same methodology of acting, for example, in different cities, even if we don't share the same political ideas, I think that is a very, very important. And this can create more awareness around the condition of the interdependence. That, also, that is another way to look at the core of the politics and human condition. So thank you very much. Help. It'll come back to you. Yes, thank, thank you very much, Giuseppe. Uh, it took me a second just to unmute myself. Um, as always, uh, Giuseppe, uh, your presentation and uh, material uh, is very, I think, thought-provoking in many different dimensions. Um, thanks a lot, I enjoyed it very much. I would first, before going ahead with some questions, I would remind that uh, attendants can, can put their questions in the Q&A section. Um, and we will uh, go as, as the questions come in, uh, read them to, to, to Giuseppe. And I would also, yeah, Tobias is also here. 
um, invite Tobias to uh, raise any questions uh, that he might have and uh, start the discussion. Um, Tobias, perhaps if you have a question, if you would like to start, uh, you can go ahead. Yes, I um, I have actually. Um, I think the interesting thing with the whole um, commons element is um, also within Ostrom is um, one thing which is lacking. I mean, she mentioned this issue of heterogeneity of actors, etc., and this is the issue of power between between all those actors. Um, meaning, um, do actors in this context have the same uh, amount of possibilities to bring in their ideas regarding how the governance should be of these resources? And I think that's one of the crucial things which um, Osram did not pay that much attention to because that, that can change a lot, you know. And that's that's the uh, that's the main issue regarding um, this homogeneity and heterogeneity uh, thing. So I I wanted to know how how do you deal with this because if you for instance you have a, a group of people who actually manage a resource and there are other people coming in from the outside uh, claiming that they also have the right to use this, we have seen in many cases that um, actually um, what these people do, I mean, either they sort of participate, there's a discussion how to do things. Many times there's also external actors who come in and say, well, um, I have the right, referring to, to the legal system, I have the right regarding whatever element of, of a law that might exist or within a legal pluralistic system, um, I have the right to use that resource and uh, you have to leave it to me. So sometimes people have the power to sort of claim that um, actually they don't want to share, they don't want to have a commoning strategy, but they, they want to take it over. And in fact, this is what we see all around the world, um, also in urban areas. I mean, this is the issue of gentrification, you know, sort of. I mean, you have areas where people are sharing, commoning, and this area, and that's a second question to you, how do you deal? I mean, you mentioned the market. How do you deal with market forces? Because market forces and market actors sort of transfer the value of what is a commons, you know? And, and that might attract also powerful actors who are not interested again in the comedy. And then the third question refers to, to, the, to the hacking. I think this is a very interesting idea and also remains me regarding strategic uh, use of law. Um, in, in, in the work that we did um, at the University of Bern, we were referring in legal anthropology to what uh, Kepet von Bender Beckmann called forum shopping. She saw in Indonesia that, you know, uh, people who have certain problems, they don't go to perhaps the state court, they go to the traditional court because they have a problem, you know, that the state court would not deal with, so they select. Out of this, we thought, hey, wait a minute, it's not just about forums, it's also about rules and regulations out of a pluralistic constellation regarding the selection. So we called them this institution shopping that can be made from powerful actors, but also from actors from below. Meaning in an urban context, uh, you have a settlement which is abandoned, uh, where actually, um, you know, um, groups who are um, not well to do sort of go in and use it. And there's, there's a discussion, how can we have a legal setting to actually um, ask for the comments that we are developing, you know, and then also one tries to select among rules and regulations. So th that would be the th third point. How is, is your um, thinking of hacking related also to what um, we are discussing under institution shopping? Okay, uh, Giuseppe, would you like to address that? But I, I want to mention that we have uh, at least two uh, raised hands, uh, Tobias and Lucia, uh, we will unmute you after perhaps, yeah, if that's okay, Giuseppe, after you respond to Tobias's question. Okay. You can do this very quickly. It was just certain points. And if we have more people uh, in, then uh, yeah, please give also the word to them. I go very quickly, but uh, there are bigger issues, obviously. The last one, uh, let's, uh, I, I do an example connecting with the, the webinar uh, uh, from New Zealand. Uh, the colleagues say very well that when they create uh, 
the recognition of Eruvia uh, as a legal person. This, she's thinking, this is not new because we have the same for the companies. That's the point. In my perspective, that's an hack, perfect hack, because you make recognizable for the software that is something that function. So the software say, okay, is uh, normal, but in reality, you are changing it. And so this is uh, an example. It's a different perspective, a different methodology that I think that we have to approach when we have the problem of the recognition of this kind of goods and sometimes of the commoners that really we have uh, in many, many, many experiences that we study. The second point is uh, how we deal with the problem that people don't want to share. That's a pedagogy issue for this is so important to use rules, but even for another issue, uh, even this is a strategy because you are right. When, for example, a resource is uh, become important and you say that you can use that resource at a certain point, we have the tragedy exploitation problem. We perfectly know that. But what we can do here is also to use that claim of different people in order to have other comments, other, let's say, pasture, other place where to um, use a diff in a different way. So it's like in economy, when, our, when the migrants arrive, and it's something that you perfectly uh, implicitly said, uh, all right, this is our economy, we cannot have more. It depends because economy is not a closed structure. New people can increase also the economy of, uh, of, uh, of, of a nation. So this is uh, something that can help us. And how to deal with the market force? I have no answer uh, because that's the is is an ongoing is an ongoing uh, problem. Let's say that uh, I think that one of the most important thing is to understand that when we speak about this force, we are not speaking about something that is totally different from the state. For this reason, I am speaking about the neoliberalization of the state. What these market forces have done, first of all is to change the state. So I think and the, 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 the law making from grassroots is something that I'm proposing here and every commoners a lot of time does, but it's something that the um, a neoliberal approach learned. Soft law making is exactly that. Lex Mercatoria is that. Grassroots here doesn't mean obviously uh, uh, a co appropriators of a, a, a resource, but technically there are private subjects, they are not public subjects. If we are able to change this approach to software making in a different way, and we can do that now because the law is not only the law of the public authority, I think that we can deal at least with the force of the market at the same level using the same tools. Thank you very much, uh, Giuseppe. Um, Tobias, without the family name, uh, you can uh, uh, unmute and ask the question yourself. Okay, I, I don't see any questions, but there's- No, no not, not you, Tobias. We have another Tobias. Another Tobias, sorry. <laughs> Good. I think it's Lucia. Is it? I'm, I'm a if, if that's me, I'm ready. Yes, go ahead then. Is everybody hearing me? Yes. Okay, good, because my voice is really bad today. I apologize for that. Good morning, everybody uh, who are who is in America and good afternoon for those in Europe. I, I'm talking from Brazil. And um, I was wondering if Giuseppe, well, first of all, <clears throat> When he says, when he asks us if there is such a thing as a legal framework, I have been on the hopes that Naples would have that answer for us. So um, I've been to Naples recently, looking at some institutions and the way they've been doing things. And I would like to ask Giuseppe if he could, starting from that slide, um, 
where he showed two axes of low and high, um, how is that, Giuseppe? Um, like a fourth to last slide, I started to try to picture examples that could enhance his points towards the commons. And then uh, I was also all, all the time thinking about if um, any example from Naples would work as an example of what Giuseppe is trying to tell us. So I'd ask him if he could use examples starting from that slide on to um, clarify actually, to put it more evident uh, how that could be done if it could at all. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Lucia. Um, we are approaching the time that was planned and uh, I would suggest that we extend the time by a few minutes, um, if that's okay with the audience and with Giuseppe and uh, everyone here. Yeah, okay. Giuseppe, so as I understand, it's the slide with the categorization of the goods. You mentioned how tall goods could be moved in the direction of CPR. And, and make it urban commons. Can you give a very, very vivid example in the, in the case of Naples? If we want, while I'm recovering the PowerPoint, if you want to see also, to be us, it will be better. So the guy can check where is my PowerPoint now. No need to zap, you still remember that. Okay, no need. Maybe you could explain the one of the cases, I think. Okay, now my, uh, I think that, okay, is this slide? But I think that to, to understand uh, doing this way. Okay. So to understand this slide, I think that we can go on this one. That is this commons based uh, cooperative approach. And I do this example. Um, for the use for, uh, you know, that in our country, uh, in Italy, but uh, for the climate change, even in many other countries, you have the problem uh, uh, of the, this uh, great moment of rain that are very dangerous. Near my hometown, 11 people died in Ischia Highland uh, one week ago for, uh, this, for a disaster that was connected to this. Uh, when you have some uh, experience of commoning near the river, but it's not commoning, let's say, when you have experience of use near the river, um, the place by uh, the people with a certain kind of agricultural approach, then you have as a secondary effect, also the prevention from the risk of disaster. When you have an abandoned um, part of the river, you have more disaster. And this is the same in an urban commons. When you have an abandoned place, an abandoned real estate, that place is danger. And we have, unfortunately, case that can explain that very well. When you reuse a real estate, then you are not doing something only for you, but there is a secondary effect that is good also for other people. Obviously, it depends on what you do inside. And here comes the point of regulation. And the point of regulation, I think that it's very interesting because if we say to our legal framework that the important choice not to decide who govern the place, but how we do that, we can hack both the public and the private legal framework that are traditional ones that sometimes don't say how, with what kind of rules they 
do the ongoing governance. Yes, there are some principles, but if we shift to the regulation here, we can have these two elements, the benefit for the co-appropriator and with that rules and with a control on that rules, you can have benefit also for others. I hope to have answered. Uh, perhaps I could ask Lucia if uh, she feels satisfied with the answer or if you would like to follow up on that, Lucia. I, I will, <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'll search for some follow-up. Thank you guys. Yeah, then I, I have a question, Giuseppe, to you. Um, and we see if we have more questions, perhaps we'll take another one and we could maybe uh, uh, conclude uh, today's talk. But I like the, the way you suggest, uh, let's imagine three ways how to deal with the ongoing problems of underrepresented commons. Let's create fundamental rights that are more compatible with the needs that are out there and let's use existing rules creatively and finally let's hack and create new tools when the first and the second one maybe is not enough or not possible for some reasons um, so if i understand that right um, i think that gives me a complete picture of how you see uh, bringing commons into legal systems my question to you is and i'm also fascinated by the term legal hacking obviously um, where is where would you see the limits of legal hacking let's say uh, where do we stop you also mentioned something um, something when you were explaining about fundamental rights the first principle that you suggested for example when you said if there is a private good with social functions uh, then these social functions need to be respected and then again, my question was, I think, in the direction of a little bit normative understanding where we, where we stop and where do we draw the lines on this? Yeah, I'm curious on, on, about your thoughts on that. Yes, of course. Thank you. Because this helped me to, to, to underline one thing. So when we speak about legal arcing, obviously, we speak about uh, a proposal because the legal framework should be recognized. Oh, it's, it's like the money. I can try to give you a stone saying that is one million of dollars, but if you don't recognize it, I do it by myself. It's the same from the legal framework. And here, if we propose an act, there is always a level that is in the public authority level that can be the state, a ah, municipality, for example, there is these important rules uh, of urban commons. A lot of time is not state, are the municipalities, the departments, or the local authority, or maybe also a JAD, a trio. So there is always a place where this recognition is made exactly for that for that limit. But this is important because if we use um, uh, the hacking methodology, we can even change exactly as a constitutional court have done in hundred of at least let's say 60, 70 years at least uh, changing the law itself is something that for example constitutional courts do in their interpretation and say this law is possible if you interpret it as such or i can manipulate the law directly as a judge if we start to do this manipulation from the people that is doing that, not only theoretically, but practically, I think that is something that at a certain point should be recognized or not. And there, there is a motivation. The, there is a limit, by the way, of this methodology. And the limit is exactly if you can do that in a democracy. The big limits, if you, you it's very difficult to use the hacking methodology if you, for example, live in Turkey or you live in, a, in Iran or in another place where the act doesn't function because there is a big repression. So I think that even for this reason, when we are able to do that, we should push for the change of the legal system in order to create this kind of change because not everyone can do that. And the lacking, lacking methodology is a methodology, but it's not the only one. 
So in the other case, you have the other tools that in this case means protest and it means, I, we hope, uh, new democratic government. Right. So I'm gonna step in at this point. Um, I'm just looking to see if any other hands are up, but um, we're, we'll start to wrap up. Although I have one question, if no one else does. Okay. I just have a quick comment, uh, Charlie. I think this is really interesting also to link the, the this issue of hacking with um, empirical evidence of how people um, strategically and innovatively use the legal system, mm. um, what has been called institution shopping. I think that there's a good uh, intersection between those those two um, approaches, uh, which I see as as quite uh, fruitful. And I think Giuseppe, we we should uh, so, sort of have a look at um, at the intersection of these two of these two elements. I think that's quite interesting because there's also empirical work on this just as a comment, but Charlie, please go ahead. No, I, I, I think that was a great comment and it, I think it connects to what I wanna ask. Um, uh, thank you so much for the talk. It's fascinating and, and insightful and interesting. Um, so we so appreciate you, you putting the work together to present today. Um, you mentioned early, um, you know, one of the earlier World Commons Week um, keynotes from Oceana on uh, in New Zealand, and um, that one was you know fascinating for me in that it was really looking at culture and the way the Maori people think about their relationship to land, and then hacking the New Zealand law um, to to um, introduce that uh, kind of. Uh, 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 belief in the, the relationship of land as land as a living being. Um, as I was hearing that, you know, there, there are groups here, I'm, I'm um, calling in from uh, Massachusetts, USA, and there are groups here, the term I'm hearing more and more now is regeneration, um, kind of the next generation from sustainability. And uh, there's a group that I'm working with, it's uh, a regeneration network node um, around the Connecticut River Valley. And as I heard that Oceana talk, I was thinking, okay, how do we change culture in the US um, so that we think about the river and the land that I'm on right now, uh, more like the Maori way of thinking as our mother, as, our, as, as a living being that we need to protect. And, so the idea of hacking the law to try to make that happen is fascinating to me. And I don't have an answer to this. I'll just say, I guess maybe this is more of a comment, but I'm, I'm Giuseppe, I'm interested in any reactions. Um, so the question I guess I'm asking is, um, have you seen other areas where um, there's been an effort to change culture through hacking of law? And I'll just close with this point. I think there's an existence proof for my vantage point of knowledge commons. When you think of back in 1985, roughly, when the computer programmer Richard Stallman and his colleague invented the general public license, uh, the, the hack to copy, copyright um, to actually encourage sharing a new derivative work. To me, that's an existence proof of hacking that change culture and, and, and so anyway any reactions to that before we close yes of course and uh, let's say in this way first of all that uh, no cooperation can survive in uh, is not an island cooperation that you can imagine in a single place uh, in a sea of competition so, for example, when we speak about cooperation and competition, I am not approaching to that like empty signifier. I am referring to free trade rules and for a certain idea of neoliberalization of the state and the market. So the point is that this element of competition is, a com is something that we face not only in the market, but also in the state, let's say, political realm. I give another example. Uh, I have done uh, some uh, ex 
uh, uh, the, the main part of the urban commoning experiences that I studied, and they are real all over the world, even in New Zealand, in Wellington, there is another very, very interesting, but they are in the five continents. Uh, the point is that uh, the mentality of the, we call practitioners, but a lot of time there are social movements, activists is changing. Because when we speak about open governance, this is not what in other self-organizing and squatting experiences that are very important for me, but it's a different topic here. They are different exactly because of this open door system. And this tendency is a, like uh, quoting Fichte, is a streben. It's not something that you realize it always, but it's exactly a changing of mind. And this changing of mind of heterogeneity of be open to other experiences comes from, in my opinion, the Sato movement and after the Occupy movement. Translating this in the urban areas mean exactly a change also of what we are speaking about this citizen-based organization. For this reason, I love association, I love foundations, but the point is that this kind of legal structure are performative to and help us to close ourselves. So in my perspective, open even association foundation and over legal structure that we have is fundamental exactly to change what we can say very quickly is the mindset of property rules. That is my place, I own it and I do whatever I want. It's not like that. You have to share because you are interdependent with other people. And if you are interdependent, starting from the heterogeneity of practitioners, social movement, it may seem not so a big conquire, but in my study of political sociology is a big conquire and is a big change of mindset. We should push for this exactly because, and I close to this, the point that Tobias were facing that is not simple to share. It's something that we perfectly know exactly as people that study commons. So commons in this sense are not the end, are the starting point of what we are imagining. That is a different society exactly because have a different idea of independence among the people. Well, thank you. Uh, I just um, shared my screen. Hopefully you can see it. Uh, and I'm, uh, I, I, I wanna at this point uh, thank our speaker again for a wonderful talk. I wanna thank my colleagues, uh, Tobias and uh, Ilkom for uh, organizing this talk. Um, this was, you can't see the audience, but there was an incredible audience here today. Uh, we were very grateful for taking the time and going over time um, to, to, to be here today. Um, uh, thank you for that. As we close, I just wanna draw your attention to uh, the World Commons Week events and and I hope you'll spread the word and uh, happy World Commons Week to everyone and uh, get the word out. Um, uh, but on your screen, hopefully you're seeing it, uh, is a, uh, we have the video contest, uh, the finalists that are up on the website. We're still taking uh, votes um, for people's favorite and that'll be announced tomorrow, the winner of that. Um, if you miss some of the other uh, keynotes, uh, I'll, I'll just quickly go through. This was the African keynote. Um, that video is available on, on, our, on our website at this point. Uh, this is the Oceana keynote that we've mentioned a couple times. Um, that video is available on the website. Um, the next few, I'm just getting to putting up the videos, so they're not there yet, but we had, um, for North America, we had Javier. Um, uh, give that talk. So that video will be up today, I hope, um, on the website if you want to see that. Uh, in China, uh, we had Yahua uh, talk uh, about this textbook. Um, that video is coming and it had an English translation, translation I've been told. Uh, we had uh, for Asia, Eduardo um, gave this talk. Again, that video will be coming up soon. Uh, yesterday, we had the Latin American talk, uh, which was done in Spanish, and um, uh, which was great. Uh, I'm gl so glad we did it in Spanish. 
We don't have an English translation for that. We were trying, but uh, if you speak Spanish, that one is really interesting. Um, and then tomorrow we close the week by celebrating our early career network community. And so uh, these two colleagues will be talking about growing together as an intellectual community. And I do hope that every IESC member, um, we wanna really encourage this community. It's got a lot of energy. Um, so I, I hope to see some of you there. I also hope to see um, um, you at the Nairobi conference in person. Um, it's gonna be so great to be back in person. Uh, so, and as you can see, the call for abstracts are closing in three days. So um, uh, please consider that. As I close, I just wanna thank my two co-organizers for their efforts in helping me with this event. And I'll close with these websites. And if you're not an IASC member, consider joining. Uh, and again, we hope to see you in Nairobi. Uh, I know Tobias is working very, very hard with others on making that event happen. Uh, Tobias, I don't know if you wanna say anything before we close on that front. Well, no, I mean, you you mentioned already that uh, the, the deadline for, um, for paper abstracts is closing soon. So please have a look at the different sub themes, how you would like to uh, participate, I think. Um, all our uh, Kenyan colleagues very much appreciate that uh, everybody from around the world will come and do some science commenting on debates such as we had before. So please uh, join us and uh, greetings also from all the colleagues from, from University of Nairobi and University of Bern who jointly co organize this conference. Well, with that, we'll close. Again, thank you everyone for uh, being here and again to our speaker and to our organizers for the effort to put this together. Have a good day and I hope to see you tomorrow in the ECN one. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Bye. I'm gonna turn recording off.